Information shared on the following program is for general information purposes only. It does not constitute legal, tax, investment, or other advice, nor is it intended to recommend any particular investments, products, or financial instruments. Always seek advice from your financial advisor, attorney, or accountant with regard to investment, legal, or tax questions. So if I could control how you spend your attention, if I could maybe steal your attention through a distraction. Stop letting the financial world divert your attention away from your money. Stay tuned as we discuss the pyramid of misdirection. Welcome to the only show in the country dedicated to helping savers worry less about money. The Worry-Free Retirement with offices in Louisville, Bowling Green, and Lexington. Your host, nationally recognized retirement specialist, five-time author, and fiduciary, Tony Walker. Welcome, folks, to the Worry-Free Retirement. I am that little man in the sweater vest, 401k rollover specialist and fiduciary, Tony Walker. And if you feel like you're in the same boat as the poor soul whose attention is being diverted and following the herd to nowhere, today's show and the next five shows are going to be for you because what we are about to share is how to teach you, number one, why so many people follow the herd. And again, the most five popular financial tactics savers fall victim to as a result. Referred to by Forbes magazine as an artful manipulator of awareness, legendary pickpocket artist Apollo Robbins asks an interesting question when it comes to diverting another man's attention to get what you want. He says, we can only perceive so much information. In other words, it's a lot easier to follow what someone else is saying, especially if what we see appears to be what everybody else is doing, something we in the financial world called the herd mentality. And notice that Robbins' ability to divert the subject's attention away from what Robbins is actually trying to do, which is take the goods right off this poor man's body. And also he captivates the viewers and the audience to follow along with his diversionary tactics. In other words, right in plain sight, nobody can really tell what Robbins is taking from the man because he so successfully diverts the attention away to what he's trying to accomplish. Let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen in person a magician, pickpocket artist, or illusionist? Well, years ago, my wife and I personally witnessed the phenomenon of misdirection while attending a live performance of world-renowned illusionist David Copperfield. Now, though it, we knew that his act was based on the ability of diverting the audience's attention away from the magic he was going to perform, but my wife and I and all these other folks sitting around this live studio were following the herd as Copperfield successfully grabbed our attention so that he could pull off his magic. Now, luckily, it didn't cost us anything other than the ticket price of admission, which I guess was a sleight of hand in a way, but we were following the herd as Copperfield was performing. And true to form, as Apollo Robbins so duly noted, as we watched Copperfield, our minds could only perceive so much information. Well, believe it or not, our money and our interaction with the financial world is a lot like attending a performance of an illusionist. That's because the messages coming from the financial world have one goal in mind to get our focus on what we think we want, saving as much for retirement, for instance, and presenting their side of the story of how best to save for the retirement with the sleight of hand of stashing, for instance, all of our life savings in their 401k plan. For instance, my granddad, who lived in and around Lexington, Kentucky his entire adult life, began working for Bell South in 1932. After all those years of work, he retired in 1978. Oh, on a side note, uh, he also worked briefly as an engineer for a sister station we're on right now with the Worry Free Retirement, WLEX Channel 18 there in Lexington. Anyway, prior to 1978, everyone pretty much worked their lives and followed the herd. That is, working with the same company. Now, why would they do this? Because they knew that if they hung around with these companies and kept their nose clean, that one day when they retired, as promised, their employer would provide a pension plan. In other words, a guaranteed lifetime income that they could never outlive. This pension, granddad called mailbox money, proved to be way too expensive for companies to continue to carry. So in 1978, ironically, they allowed Wall Street and the government to usher in what we now call the 401k plan. And therefore, now we've got millions and millions of Americans investing their hard-earned money in these 401ks and they don't have the safety and security of what we call mailbox money. This is my point. It's 
so easy to dissuade people from guaranteed lifetime income or pensions, which is what everybody used to have, and instead take these poor old savers and convince them, because everybody else is doing it, to invest all their hard-earned money in the stock market. Now, as a financial advisor and someone who majored in psychology in college, by the way, this whole notion of people following the herd and the financial world's ability to divert our attention led me in 2010 to write a book called, whoops, there we go, I've got two of them here, called Don't Follow the Herd. Actually, a couple of years later, folks, I wrote a book called The Three Personalities of Money. So I've written several books on this whole topic of following the herd. But as we'll learn today, I'm not the only one who is recognizing the power of suggestion and the ability of the world to get us off our game and onto theirs. So what we're going to do, I'm going to come back, stay tuned, as I share one of the most important concepts that savers must understand in order to hold on to more of their money. So what? So they can use and enjoy it. You're watching The Worry Free Retirement. I'll be right back. And now it's time for the adventures of Stella and Scout. <laughs> You've been watching the adventures of Stella and Scout. Have you recently retired, been laid off, or offered a buyout? Has a company you work for recently moved or been acquired or closed its doors forever? Then take advantage of this opportunity to move your 401k to safer territory. Why continue to risk your hard-earned money when you don't have to? Let's meet in person today to discuss your retirement options. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to schedule your no-obligation appointment to meet with me in person. Do it today. Hold your hand out flat, open it up all the way. Put your hand up a little bit higher, but watch it close there, Joe. See, if I did it slowly, it'd be back on your shoulder. <laughs> Joe, we're gonna keep doing this till you catch it. You're gonna get it eventually, I have faith in you. Squeeze firm, squeeze. You're human, you're not slow. It's back on your shoulder. You were focused on your hand, that's why you were distracted. While you were watching this, I couldn't quite get your watch off, it was difficult. Yeah. Yet you had something inside your front pocket. Do you remember what it was? Check your pocket, see if it's still there. Is it still there? <laughs> oh, that's where it was. Go ahead and put it away. I guess I'd like to pose that question to you. If you could control somebody's attention, what would you do with it? Well, you're watching legendary pickpocket artist, Mr. Apollo Robbins, and he asks a question. If you could control somebody's attention, what would you do with it? Now, before we take a deeper dive into today's topic, I must admit, that I've always had an interest in card tricks. In fact, if I may, to illustrate one of my favorite tricks, I've asked America's favorite financial sidekick to come on over, Aaron Orander. Thank you, man, for hey. participating. You are going to get wild. Are you ready? Okay, I'm, I'm ready to be amazed. Okay, now in the essence of time, I'm going to go through this pretty quick. This is okay. one of my favorite card tricks of all time. It's called the seven card card trick. Okay. What I'm going to have you do, just pick a card. These have been shuffled, okay? There's no order to them. Just pick a card anywhere. Okay. okay I don't want them, any, any of them. Okay, now I'm going to turn around. I want you to hold that card up to the camera. Make sure they see it good. The audience has seen it. You ready? Okay. Okay, just insert it anywhere back in. It doesn't matter where you put it. That's fine. Right there is fine. So I'm going to start to count these cards. And what I'm doing, Aaron, is shuffling them around so that we know for sure that I have not done anything hokey pokey here. Yeah. And that through the magic of physics, watch this. I want you to start slapping those cards. Just slap them with your hands. Is that your card? <laughs> it is. It's my card. That's right. That's right. So what we've experienced, Aaron, is a diversionary tactic. Okay. Now, basically, what I'm going to do, if we go back over this, we're going to go in slow motion and repeat this. Okay. So let's go back and look and see what exactly happened. As you'll notice, I looked to see where you put the card in. It went in the third from the bottom. Okay. I yeah. watched it closely. Okay. Now, all this shuffling around and throwing around, I knew where that card was. It was very important that I saw you place it back in the deck. 
And my only objective, because I understood how the physics are going to work, was to get that card on the bottom of those seven cards. Are you okay, with me? Okay. And for whatever reason, I do not know why, whenever you hit cards like that, for some reason, the last card you hold, if you hold it properly in your fingers, will be your card. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. So thanks very much, Aaron. Get back to work All over right. there. And All Megan right. was assisting on that. A great, great opportunity there, folks, to understand the power of diversionary tactics. So what we're going to do now, we're going to kind of walk over here and talk about this concept of the herd mentality and what we call the art of misdirection. So more than likely, just like Aaron, you were not thinking of what I was doing because you didn't know the trick. You were following along with what I was saying with no real idea of what I was trying to accomplish. I was in control of the illusion or the misdirection. Now folks, the same throws true for your money and a world that would love to get it. Now in our circles, we refer to this study of money and why people follow the herd as behavioral finance. In other words, why do people invest money in things that number one, they don't understand, or number two, they're investing because everybody else is. Interesting article from corporatefinanceinstitute.com. This is entitled, What is Herd Mentality? The article refers to four buckets of behavioral finance or biases. Let's take a look at these four. It's very interesting. The first is something called self-deception. Now what this means, let's say somebody is very dogmatic about what they believe. Um, in the financial world, we have a lot of these people. These people are know-it-alls, folks. They just assume that there's one size fits all. It's their, their way or the highway. And what happens is you kind of become indoctrinated into their way of doing business and thinking about money. There's a problem with this though. If you ever run into new information or information that seems contrary to what they've taught you, it limits your ability to learn. So that's the first thing you have to watch. The second bias they recommend or look at is called heuristic simplification, which basically refers to information processing errors. You know, they always say with a computer, junk in, junk out. So if the information you're trying to understand is not processed carefully, everything you build upon that will be an error. Number three, and it, very interesting, emotion. How our mood affects our decision making. I don't know about you, but I always tell widows or widowers, do not start making financial decisions immediately after you lose a loved one because your emotions are going to come into this. And in fact, then you might start asking all kinds of people what you should do. And again, thus potentially follow the herd even more closely. And finally, well, this is a big one, social. How we're influenced by others, which is where the herd mentality really comes in. You know, something I think about with my granddad, I mean, he didn't have social media back then. You know, prior to 1978, we didn't even have the internet. And in his day, this was something he didn't really have as influential, or influential rather, as we do. You don't believe me that the world can chase you around? Just get on your iPhone, get on your uh, mobile device, start clicking on the internet, and watch how these folks can chase you all over God's creation. So the social media, this whole gig, creates in us a herd mentality, or sometimes what we refer to as FOMO, the fear of missing out. It diverts our attention away from what we want because we start looking and seeing what everybody else appears to want. Now here's another good article that came into B. This is a good one here, I love this. This was actually a poll. Which of the following behavioral biases affect investment decision making the most? Now this one they surveyed people like me, investment practitioners, about 724 wearing this across the world, and they wanted to show this graphic, look at this, of all the votes that stood out, of all the experience of these financial advisors in terms of what affected people's behavior and investment decisions the most, the top one, look at that, hurting. In other words, being influenced by peers or others. This was a really interesting study, folks. Uh, what about this? FranklinTempleton.com asked a simple question. What is a herd behavior? An investor's guide to herd behavior. Really good stuff. And look at this. It shares throughout history in examples of how people have followed the herd. I don't know if you ever heard of this. In Holland, 1634, this was famous. This was written about many times. I've got a book about this. It was called Tulip Mania. And in that, people began to believe that these tulips were worth all kinds of money. They got the seeds and they got the tulips and different kinds and they were hoaxed into thinking that all of these tulips were worth something. Look at the price of tulips. What about the roaring 20s of the stock market? Same thing. Everybody was buying, buying, buying. It drove up the price and these prices were inflated and all of a sudden the legs got cut out from under Wall Street. And you know what happened there? The dot-com bubble. Well, back in the 90s during this period of time, I remember I represented a 
uh, uh, Van Wagner Emerging Growth Fund. This guy, Garrett Van Wagner, was into the tech stuff. It says 294%. He did 270% in one year, folks. Folks, it was not real. It was funny money, and it fell apart. And then finally, we saw the real estate bubble go up 71%. Of course, everybody and his brother had to uh, get in real estate. I had a buddy that bought a couple of properties. Man, he borrowed out the wazoo for this real estate in Florida, but it was valued high, right? So they did the appraisals. He borrowed the money. Well, when this happened, he told me, he said, Tony, I walked into a bank. I threw the keys on the desk. I said, these are yours, man. I can't afford them. He just walked away from it. And of course, the bank had to take it back. It was really, really crazy. So what we're talking about, folks, is this concept of the herd mentality. How do we avoid it? What do we look for? And what we're going to come back is actually talk about pyramids. That's right. There's something I've come up with, a unique concept of pyramids called the Pyramid of Misdirection. And we're going to talk about how the financial world uses five tactics to get you to follow the herd. You're watching the Worry-Free Retirement. Good stuff. I'll be right back. Tired of the roller coaster ride of the stock market? Let Tony Walker show you how to smooth out the ride with your money. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com and let's get started. And now it's time for Tony in the Trenches. Our TNT question for today comes from a gentleman that asked, Tony, I recently attended a dinner seminar and after the meeting decided to meet with the advisor who hosted it and he showed me an annuity that is paying 10% guaranteed. He's wanting me to roll my 401k over to this annuity, but I, this all sounds too good to be true, is it? Well, actually it's kind of a half truth. It is and it isn't. So we're going to take a look at this real quick. So let's assume you're going to get a 10% return on an annuity. Can you really do that? Well. You can, but that is called an income rider. Folks, a lot of confusion over this, a lot of deception, a lot of diversionary tactics to get you thinking you're making 10% on your money, which you are, but not really. Let me explain. In this example, let's say you had a $300,000 401k and rolled it into a fixed indexed annuity with an income rider, okay? So out of the gate, year one, on the contract side, that's the money that is linked to the stock market. There's no loss of that money, but that may not grow at all. And then this is the side, the income side, that gets the 10%, in this case, a simple interest compounding. Now, let's say the market never goes up. Theoretically, you may not have any more money than you started, even after 10 years. That 300000 may not have grown. There's no guarantees. Now, obviously, this has grown. I'm just picking a fictitious number. Let's say it's worth $500,000. And that's where you have to take your mailbox money. Folks, if you don't agree to the terms of the contract and take it out over your lifetime, you don't get it. At your death, nobody gets this, okay? Your family or what you decide to surrender is this side. So yes, to just say that an annuity pays 10% guaranteed, that is not accurate and certainly is not the whole story. Okay, let's get back to our uh, theme of our show and what we're doing here. We're talking about the idea of the herd mentality. And I want to take you over and take a look at what I call the pyramid of misdirection. And that's the subject of our topic. And again, for the next five weeks, we'll be talking about this on the show. We're going to cover each of these tactics that the financial world uses to divert our attention from what we really want. Oh, by the way, speaking of pyramids, our resident expert on pyramids, Ms. Megan Murphy, who also serves as our technical director, Let's do this. Let's go live to Egypt right now because I want to talk to Megan real quickly. I have heard that, Megan, there are underground buckers or caverns or something that the Egyptians put into the pyramids. Could you help, under, help us understand what's going on with these pyramids in Egypt? That's right, Tony. And as you can see behind me, I'm here with the pyramids. And a little fun fact, ancient Egyptians also used the art of misdirection. They would build false passages and false chambers into their tombs in order to keep grave robbers from stealing all their stuff. Uh, looks like a sandstorm's coming. I'm getting out of here. Thank you, Megan, for that live report. Now get in here and get back to work, okay? All right, we got to move here. What are the five misdirections that the financial world uses 
to get us to follow the herd? Well, number one is more risk. You know, you've been taught that in order to make it in this world, you've got to be willing to take risk. And if the market crashes, just hang in there, it'll come back. Now, that's fine maybe if you're 40 or 45 years of age, but you're a saver, retired or retiring soon, folks. You don't want to follow the herd towards more risk. What's the second misdirection? More money. You know, for years, even in my first book I covered this years ago, The Worry for Retirement, what I discovered in working with thousands of people over the years, I got to watch their life play out. And what I realized is the financial world will scare you into thinking as you get older, you need more money. What I've found as you get older, you spend less money. Let's look at number three. Boy, this is a doozy. More magic. Uh, there was a book that came out years ago, and it was called The Number or something like that. Even the magic number or the magic amount. I remember a, a company that had an advertisement with people walking around with these big numbers. You know, you need $2 million and you'll be at... All that stuff is bunk, folks. There is no magic number. It all depends on your situation. The other misdirection tactic is more cost. They don't want you to focus on cost, folks. We've got fees. We've got investment risk. We've got um, uh, interest on your money. We've got insurance premiums. Uh, it goes on and on taxes, okay? You have to get those costs under control. The financial world does not want you focusing on them. They misdirect you away from the cost. And finally, more fear. Fear of running out of money, fear of a nursing home, fear that you won't leave anything for your kids. Uh, fear, fear, fear. And as we're gonna see in the coming weeks, this whole idea of fear gets you focused on the herd instead of creating a game plan that's gonna work for you. So folks, I hope you've enjoyed where we're going with this. I think this is gonna be some very, very helpful information. Incidentally, I'd like to announce, for those of you over in Lexington, we've got a couple things for everybody, but specifically in Lexington, on August 13th, over in the Georgetown area, I'm gonna be personally hosting a 401k rollover workshop. So if you're retired or retiring soon, that's August 13th, to register, go to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. As well, on July 16th, we'll have a live webinar I'll be personally hosting called How to Roll Over Your 401k Plan. We'll explain how to do that. Again, that's on July 16th. To register for either of those, log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Well, does the Bible have anything to say about this herd mentality and the fear of things that may gravitate and put a grip on you and get you away from God? It sure does, but first I gotta get me a cup of coffee. You're watching The Worry Free Retirement. I'll be right back. Have you recently retired, been laid off, or offered a buyout? Has a company you work for recently moved or been acquired or closed its doors forever? Then take advantage of this opportunity to move your 401k to safer territory. Why continue to risk your hard-earned money when you don't have to? Let's meet in person today to discuss your retirement options. Log on to TonyWalkerFinancial.com to schedule your no-obligation appointment to meet with me in person. Do it today. Men come down here from New York and from Florida to, to find out my reasons on rock and roll music and why I preach against it. And I believe with all of my heart that it is a contributing factor to our juvenile delinquency of today. Interesting take from this gentleman on the diversions of music and getting our minds focused on the beat. It's actually a good point, but surely this preacher didn't mean these guys playing on the streets of Lexington. <laughs> And surely he didn't mean one of my all-time favorite groups, Earth, Wind & Fire, playing on the streets of New York. Now, without making light of the preacher's remarks, which has some truth to it in terms of how things we enjoy in this world can sometimes surface as completely innocent, then divert our attention to other things, my personal concern with this line of thinking is that our personal convictions of what we see, at least as what we think we might see and relate to God, may not always be correct. Evidence of this misguided interpretation of what we see with our eyes occurred in Matthew 11:18, 19. 19. 
People saw John the Baptist, a man who possessed nothing, a man, a prophet, crying in the wilderness who would think, everybody would think, would put on a pedestal. But no, the religious people of that day, what did they say? They declared him to be a demon. Then Jesus says in verse 19 that the Son of Man, that's Jesus by the way, came eating and drinking. And what do they say about Jesus? Again, the Son of God. Behold, a gluttonous man, a drunkard, a friend of tax gatherers, those were the worst enemies of the day, and a friend to sinners. So in what they saw and who Jesus hung out with, sinners and drunkards apparently, they assumed that he too was one of them. They were diverted away from recognizing the very Son of God because they were so hung up on the potential dangers of, shall we say, rock and roll music and the beat. You see what I mean here? In Watchman Nee's powerful piece, Love Not the World, he says the following of this religious herd mentality. He says, Christians are forsaking all sorts of worldly pleasures in hopes thereby of being delivered from them. What God is trying to teach us is that you can't run from the world. As we discussed earlier with the advent of social media, you try to run from the world and guess what? The world will quickly find you and of course try to divert your attention away from what really matters. That is, the finished work of Jesus Christ, which allows you and I to focus not on these worldly things, or at least not allow them to get their grip on us, but on the things of God. You know, Jesus didn't come to save you from the world. That was part of it, but came to deliver us from the power of it. In fact, Jesus says in Matthew 6, 31, do not be anxious for what you shall eat or drink or the clothes you wear. Why did he say that? Because he knew these things would divert us away from the truth of God. But Tony, you say, I can't help it, man. My eyes cannot focus on God. What should I do? And I would say the same thing Paul told us to do in Ephesians 1.18, to pray. And you say, well, pray for what? Pray that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened so that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of his glory of inheritance for those of you who call yourself saints. Pray that your eyes will be opened by God because he is faithful to reveal the truth to you. I promise you that. What about you? You may be sitting there saying, Tony, that's all encouraging, but man, can we get back to the money here? I don't see what's going on with my money. I don't understand my money. I need somebody in whom I can place my trust that has the ability to get me away from the herd and just do what's right for me. And as a fiduciary, that's my job. My job is to work in your best interest, not the interest of the financial world. I'd like the opportunity to talk to you either by phone or in person. We've got offices in Bowling Green, Louisville, and now my home stomping ground as a kid, Lexington, Kentucky. So do yourself a favor. Log on now to TonyWalkerFinancial.com. Let's get started. Let's meet or at least talk by phone and see how we might help you be more worry-free about your money. Well, thanks for joining us today on the Worry Free Retirement. You remember between now and next time, between now and the time we see each other, if all else fails, you be worry-free. Make it a good one.